so here we go uh, day three I think of the the strip down um, basically got the oil pump apart now some scoring in here so I need to address this um, on the end plates also some slight scoring here so this can all be dressed up on uh, on the surface plate with some uh, uh, emery paper without adjust without affecting the tolerances in here so um yeah, so I'm going to get that underway, give it a clean and get this thing up together and finished. See you soon. Okay, so welcome back. The uh, oil pump's now been refurbished. Um, all of the scoring has been minimised. You can you can never get rid of the whole of it. Well, you can get rid of the whole of it, but uh, it's a balancing act between managing the tolerances and getting rid of the scoring. Um, on the two end casings, you can get rid of most of the scoring as long as you don't go too far down in this cavity, these cavities here. So um, it was pretty badly scored when we started off, and I'll put some pictures up to show that. So the scoring's been removed, a lot of the scoring's been removed here, and, and the bad scoring on here um, has also been removed. Um, so it will now operate, uh, operate a lot more smoother and provide a better seal. Um, all been through the ultrasonic cleaner, so hopefully we should, uh, we should be good to go on assembling this oil pump. Catch you soon. Okay, we're in the final stage of finishing the work on the crank now. So basically this crank has now been uh, polished, it's been checked for run out, um, which is a little bit more than I would have hoped, as well within uh, service limits, but uh, it is running out by about a thou. So uh, uh, that's, uh, that's acceptable. Um, so all the pistons are matched now to the con rods. So the last thing we're going to do now is check the oil clearance on the con rods. And how do we do that? Well, it's actually very straightforward. As you can see here, all these con rods are sat upright. They're not falling over, which means that there, there is a perfect amount of clearance between the, the bearing and the, uh, uh, and the, and the journal. Uh, somewhere in between 35 and 45 microns, as we saw on here, this is what is set up on here. It gave me the, set, the selection of the big ends here, which is what I've used. Now we'll see that in practice now, uh, when we bring that forward. So what we're looking for is a smooth drop down of this con rod without it actually falling down loosely. Now they, they will vary because they are, these are set between 35 and 45 microns. So 35 microns I would expect it to fall down smoothly and easily. Like that one. That was probably 45 between 35 and 45 microns. So you can see how they're dropping down smoothly, they're not smacking down on the bench. That one's absolutely perfect. So that one's about, probably about 30 to 35 microns, I would guess. So there we go, that's, uh, that's it. So those are now set up now, uh, ready to be installed back in the, the casings once the uh, engines have been painted. We'll catch up soon. So good morning, um, welcome back to the Super Sport Shed. Um, today we're going to start the uh, the process of reassembly of this Honda CBX 1000 Z model. Uh, this is a, probably about a se uh, September 78 this was built, this uh, this particular engine. So everything's been prepared now, so, so you will have seen 
the crank being prepared, balanced, checked for run out, um, uh, polished, and all the rods here balanced with matching pistons all into one gram. So you'll see on here, I basically write the gram weight of the total piston um, and con rod and bearings all in there. So all these are 580, this one's 579. So all of the, the guides, the tensioners, the primary chain are here. Uh, the seals for the uh, on the alternator, the alternator bearing off the primary shaft, the starter, uh, the starter gears here, um, and uh, and this is the primary shaft gear. So basically, we're going to go through. So now, now, so basically, all of these are are new replacement parts, or if they're not new, they are new old stock or or slightly used parts from my stock. So for all intents and purposes, they are as good as new. Now, the first step we're going to basically undertake on this is uh, installing the main bearings in here. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. First thing we're going to do is install the uh, the bearing and the the seals into the uh, for the primary shaft. That's the first step we're going to take. Then we're going to go through. We're going to install the uh, the main bearings, and we're just going to put the crank in and just check it runs smoothly. Okay. Um, once we've done that, then we'll start moving towards putting starter motor gear in, the primary shaft, making sure the primary shaft is aligned here to make sure that the uh, the igniter is lined up to make sure the spark's uh, in the right place off the crank. Um, so that's basically what we're going to achieve today, hopefully, is to get all this put back together so that the, uh, the top part of the motor is ready to assemble with the transmission on the bottom. And then, uh, then we'll look at the the, uh, the next part, the lower part of the crankshaft, and assembling the two together. So what I'm going to basically do now is I'm going to put the camera on the stand, and I'm just going to run through a, a few basics. First things first, so before we get to that, I just really want to run through you my setup. Now everyone's got their own way of doing things. Um, this here is basically my Honda toolkit for assembling engines. Everything of those who who, you, who build Hondas will know. 8, 10, 12, 14, 17. Basically, that's a, every bolt that you need on, on a or nut that you need on a socket for a, a Honda motor, certainly a CBX and a CB series, anyhow. Um, then I've got my mallets here. Uh, so I've basically got everything here that will allow me to do what I need to do without leaving the workbench. So I'm now going to set the camera up and we'll come back and I'll run through a few basics of inspection before we start. Catch up soon. Okay, so here we go. So basically I'm going to start and run through the number of the things that you basically need to check on, on this particular engine that are, are known issues. Um, but starting off with basics, I just really want to come back for checking bearings. Okay, now it's very easy to check a bearing when it's got oil in it. But that oil actually means that the bearing surfaces aren't actually touching because uh, the oil act, acts as the boundary layer between the, the two surfaces. So if you want to check a roller bearing, a um, bit of petrol have I got here, wash the bearing out and then feel for movement and move it around because what you're looking for is anywhere in the, in the casings and in the ball bearings themselves. So just make sure that run it round like this and check that it's actually smooth, that there are, it's not catching at all. If it is, throw it in the bin and get another one. So that's how you, basically the first steps for checking a bearing. And I would recommend you do that on, on any, any rebuild. After you've uh, checked it, obviously put oil back in it because the last thing you want to do is this bike to start up and uh, for that bearing to be running dry. So there we go, a bit of oil in there now and that bearing is running lovely. So we're good. So that's good to go back in now. So that's that. So next thing to check for is the starter clutch. Now, basically this is a similar design on the double overhead cams. It just happens on the CBX. It's actually inside the motor on the double overhead cam 900, 750s and 1100s on the outside. And what you're looking for is any marks on here, any sort of flat spots, because that will cause all sorts of issues and, and will, will either make the, this actually slip or it will catch and it will knock and uh, it's not a nice experience. So I don't know whether you can see on here but there's nothing on there, there's no no flat spots on here, it's nice and smooth. So I'm happy with that, that's a good starter gear. Now the other thing to do 
you check the plungers and rollers. Quite often these springs can break in here. And so what you're looking for is for that roller to be popping up and down on all three of them. There's three, ro three plungers and rollers in here. And you can see they're all working lovely. The other thing to do is then just put your finger on the rollers and spin them round. Again, just checking to feel for any flat spots on there. Because if they are, it will cause all sorts of issues. And that's what uh, the last thing any of you want after you build a motor. So this, this setup here is all good. If it's not, you're going to have to disassemble this, find second-hand parts, uh, which may be available. I don't know if there's new old stock parts available for this or pattern parts, but you can rebuild these and uh, you're good to go. If this part goes, you're going to have to find yourself a replacement. So that's that. Next thing to do on the starter gear is check that there's no broken teeth on here, because again, that will cause all sorts of issues. The starter motor will spin and it won't engage. So you can see that's good. Next thing to do is just check that the, uh, the shaft that it's running on, there's no movement which says not. And the other thing is, make sure you've got this spring bearing, which I'll show you how that fits when we go back. So that's, that's the gear to start with. So that's that, okay? So that's the starter gear. Now the next thing to go is, unfortunately this size oil seal, they don't do a double lip seal. Uh, which, which you need on this particular motor. So what Honda have done is they've got this set up here. Now you can buy these from Bert at the Six Center, um, which I which I have done. This one's in perfectly good condition. So just feel on the lip there that's good, and then you can put it over here and make sure that it's it's a nice fit. So that's uh, that's that. So I'm quite happy with that now. So I've got a, a new oil seal to put in and the existing uh, secondary seal that goes in there. So that, that's that's it. Um, the primary chain is uh, is is new. The uh, the cam chain is new. Um, bearings are new old stock, um, and so they're going to be fitted. And uh, so I think that's about it for now. So we're now going to start the process of assembling the uh, um, the primary shaft and the crankshaft into the into the crankcase. Now what I'm going to do for expediency. I'm going to put it on frame lapse, so you're going to see uh, time lapse. So you're going to see this uh, being built over time. And when there's important parts to, to show, then I will stop and I will record those separately. So we'll catch up soon. Hopefully that's been useful for you.